Hi everyone, Carl here from Self Sufficient Hub. So I've not long got home. I'm quickly gonna go and do my bacon, which I've got curing, and I need to change the cure on it every day. I'm gonna quickly get that taken care of, and then I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna spend some time with you guys and my goats. Now, there's a lot of things I do with my goats that you've seen before, but we're gonna be talking today about less of the daily activities, because you're familiar with those, and I've done a video if you're interested on our daily goat routine. But today I'm gonna be talking about breeding the breeding cycle and what we're doing right now what we're looking to do shortly but also um, some periodic stuff for just looking after them like trimming feet and things like that so they just had some hedging <laughs> which they're nibbling on now i'm just going to go and get a bit more hay to put in their hay net if you remember a couple of days ago i said we've got one of our goats that's just uh, losing a little bit of weight so we're we're just making sure they've got plenty of hay at the moment, even though usually we, in the summer, we don't always give them hay. It's kind of dependent on things like this, you know, if they need it. And at the moment, one of them looks like it needs it. So we're gonna get a little bit of hay and put that in the hay net and then milk them. So our first goat is being milked right now. And uh, I've turned the generator off or the way the motor works basically is it creates a vacuum inside that bucket and once the vacuum's there as you can see the milk will just flow and then periodically you need to just turn the motor on again and it, it literally just sucks just sucks air out of that bucket so it, it's a sealed unit and it's the vacuum that basically creates the uh the negative pressure that, that effectively is the same as a, a goat a baby goat sucking so the only difference between this and a sort of a dairy parlor where you'd have far more high-end expensive equipment to work with much more animals is they would actually be done on a pulse so it would feel more like a baby kid sucking whereas here it's just a constant suck but uh, the goats are quite happy with it and it's suitable for our needs for this number of goats it's really easy anyway i've turned it off just so i could talk to you and the reason i wanted to talk to you was just to say that we've been milking our girls now since february march time i keep records but uh, off the top of my head between february and march and the reason i'm saying that is because we are approaching the time or in fact we're at the time now where i need to start thinking about getting another male now if you're going to keep goats and you're going to breed them like we do then obviously you're going to need a male goat as part of that process male goats stink they do absolutely stink it's part of the whole process they to for them to be attractive to female goats they stink they literally urinate all over themselves and rub it all in and god almighty do they honk so that among other reasons is why we don't keep a male here what we did last year is we bought a male, brought him in, kept him here for a couple of months and then sold him again. So whether or not we do that again this year, we haven't really decided yet. I haven't given it any thought, but it's certainly one of the options. That's what we're looking at now because the gestation period is about five months. So we want to start getting a male here now for September because September, that'll give us October, November, December, January, February. And if we can be kidding in February, slash March, that's perfect for us. And we're gonna put two of these girls to kid and we're gonna carry on milking the third goat. Okay, so I've just swapped my goats over. Um, anyway, as I was saying, so what, what the plan is, is to separate the two Toggenbergs, which are the two darker goats, the two black ones. The two Toggenbergs will be separated into probably that side of this paddock. We've got a separating fence down the middle and we, the house is split in two, so they've got access from each side. So we'll probably separate the Toggenbergs into that side with a stud, with a male, and then Fern, who is the older goat, she'll stay this side with rhubarb for company, and we'll continue milking Fern right through, but this will be Fern's last lactation. We got her as a rescue a couple of years ago. She was one of our first goats here, and we just don't know how old she is. And she's been an absolute superstar for us, but we don't think that we're going to kid her again. What I might do, I might get the vet to pop out and just see what the vet thinks, because basically the, the short version of this story is coming into this year, we decided, my wife and I, that this was going to be Fern's last year as a mum. 
because we just weren't sure how old she was and we don't want to put her under undue stress as she gets older. But I felt not long after she'd kidded this year and when we started milking, just she just seemed so healthy and virile that I started having second thoughts about that. But then throughout the season, she had a minor udder infection and has been struggling with that. And that's given me second thoughts again back the other way. But so the plan as it stands right now is that Fern won't be having any more kids. But like I say, it's not set in stone and it's something that, um, you know, I might just get the vet to come out and have a look and see what she thinks because she just seems such a healthy, strong goat that maybe she's a lot younger than we'd originally thought. But I, do, I just don't know. I just don't know. Um, if there are any experts out there that can tell me how to age a goat, um, there's, there's no way I can work out how to do it. Her, she's still got all her own teeth, haven't you, love? Which is one of the ways that you tell, which is, again, leading me to believe maybe she's younger than I thought. But, um, yeah, I, we just don't know for sure. So that's something that's still hanging in the balance. But as it stands now, the plan will be that Fern won't go into kid with the other two this year. Um, having said that, she probably wouldn't anyway because she'll be still giving us milk uh, when the other two don't. So Fern's an alpine which means she's slightly bigger and her teats and my hands are a perfect match. We go together very well, we fit together and I can milk her by hand quicker than I can milk her with the machine. So milking fern alone is an absolute breeze. It's a doddle, me and her can do that in no time at all. But to milk the Toggenbergs is a little bit more time consuming because I've got to get the machine set up. And speaking of which, while I've been talking to you, you can see that these udders have gone down dramatically, but so's the flow here. So I'm gonna restart the generator now and just put a little bit more suction in there to finish up this goat. Then we'll carry on this chat. Okay, so what I was saying was basically the, the size of the udders and the teats on the Toggenbergs, which are a different breed, are too small for me. It's really difficult for me. I end up having to milk them like that very much when they're full less so as their udder's empty and I can get more of my hand around it. Whereas Fern and I, you know, I can get my whole fist round really comfortably and milk her really easily. And how you milk a goat, if you imagine, the best way I can describe it, if you imagine a water balloon and then you take a needle and you pierce that nipple at the end of the balloon where there's not much pressure, not a lot's gonna come out. And then what you would need to do is you would basically need to trap some of the water with your th thumb and th thumb and finger, you need to trap some of the water down by that nipple and then squeeze it out. And that's exactly how you milk a goat. So, um, like I say, for me and Fern, we go together really well, don't we, love? And um, I can milk Fern in less than five minutes. And whereas it takes me a lot longer and it's just not fun, it's quite painful by the time I get to the end of it with the other two because they don't fit me very well. So if you're gonna get goats and you're gonna get a milking breed and you're going to hand milk them, if you're only gonna get one, it's so much easier to hand milk them. There's a lot less fuss setting up all this equipment every time and sterilizing it and what have you. Um, make sure you're going for a breed that's gonna fit you. Now, I've spoken to people online that have Toggenbergs and they say that they're perfectly suitable for them to milk by hand and great, that's great. But for me, it was a bit of a struggle. Another thing to bear in mind is these girls were less than two years old when we got them. So this was their first ever kidding, their first ever lactation. So it may well be that next year, their udders and teats are going to be more of a suitable size for me to be able to deal with by hand. So these are all just things to bear in mind. Now, having said all that, when I'm using the equipment for the other two goats, I do carry on and use it for fern. The main reason really is because then we've got one receptacle that we're capturing the milk in. This part of the system is excellent regardless of what goats you're using it for. The fact that you've got effectively a closed system from here to the milk where no foreign bodies can get in, nothing can fall in, is brilliant. It makes the processing of the milk so much easier. So with fern normally I would literally just be putting a small bucket or something underneath her and milking her by hand in. But of course, what you need to remember is just like us, when we're preparing food in our kitchen, you know, bits of hair and things can get in if we're not careful. So 
the main difference here, this goat's made of hair. So, uh, you know, you're gonna get little bits and foreign bodies in your milk because there's no way around it. So you need to then process it that much more, strain it that much more carefully and with a finer strainer. Whereas we don't need to do much processing with this at all. I personally would be very happy drinking straight out of this. That wouldn't concern me in the least. Obviously we wouldn't use those same standards with the milk that we're processing to sell or anything, but I'm just saying for me, my personal feeling, I'd be very happy drinking straight from this. The next thing I'm gonna to do today is I'm actually going to be trimming all of their feet. Now that's gonna be borderline impossible because I'm flying solo today for me to film it. It's really quite simple, but it's just something that we need to do every six to eight weeks. We have to do it quite regularly because they're on soft ground here. They don't have much hard standing. It is something that I'll show you in a future video if you're interested, but uh, it's something that we do roughly every six to eight weeks, depending on the weather, depending on how they look. You know, I just keep an eye on them, but I can tell that they need doing. So um, that is something I'm gonna be doing after we finish milking as well.